Hello, ladies and gentlemen, George here, and look at the chaos that I'm bringing you here. Uh, so what is this chaos? First and foremost, I have a lot of people still asking me what software I use, and this is Vassal, uh, V-A-S-L. If you go to the link, uh, v, -A v alpha sigma lambda dot info, you'll be able to get the module to play this game on Vassal, which is Victor Alpha Sierra Sierra Alpha Lima dot org. Uh, a lot of people already have made a lot of uh, tutorials, including myself and Neil Yulin, about how to install it and how to play it. And Joel Toppin has also made tutorials about how to actually make your own module. Anywho, I'm quite happy with uh, the way Vassal works and at my age, I can't afford to, to advocate for any, um, any uh, changes. Uh, I just love them. And as you can see here, I have my ASL boxes nice and stacked and organized. I'm working on renovating the basement. Now, this video was supposed to go out on um, Remembrance Day. Unfortunately, not a lot of my mind and not in the right frame of doing the uh, a video. And, and this one as well is pre-recorded Sunday night because with all my chores and duties that I have to do, you know, cooking, cleaning, repairing the basement and possibly looking out for any natural disaster out there that's coming. I have very little time to, to spend on, on the, um, the hobby. But anywho, this video, I will reiterate again, is my first impressions of a scenario that's slated to come out, a scenario pack called Carp Carpiquet. It takes place in D-Day, France, shortly after D-Day. Uh, and this scenario in particular is called Operation Windsor, which seems, seems to combine all scenarios into one. And this video is my first impressions about this because I'm supposed to be playtesting this. And, and like I said before, time is scarce. I also took on the job of becoming the chair person of the governing board at our school, the high school, where my son is trying to get an education. <laughs> so with all those duties and trying to volunteer for the school as well to make it a better place, very little time, but always time for some squad leader and first impressions. Now, I think that the whole package that I've seen so far, it, it bodes well. It holds a lot of historical content. It has, uh, it's very well modeled, um, but at times I find it a little top heavy with the rules, especially when you have uh, SSRs for Carpiquet, which is not bad because they add a certain flavor. Um, and this scenario is it's called Operation Windsor. It seems to combine everything. Let's start with the victory locations, okay? Or, or the victory uh, conditions. Canadians win by game end by having control of hexes. S3, T3, U4, W4 on CA board. This is playtesting. It's still not final. There's no loss on these boards. Um, on CA, board CA, the North... The North Hangers, uh, I'm, I'm guessing these are it, but somehow, maybe I don't have the, the right map, I'm not too sure. I have these victory locations marked off center on map board CA. Um, so let's go back and continue reading. North Hangers and South Hangers and having control of either A, all multi-hex stone buildings on board 53, which is this one. So multi-hex would be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, not too sure. Board 53, or B, 
uh, board buildings, CA board buildings AA7, and I don't see any buildings on AA7. So, first note is review, review uh, victory conditions, um, locations. C A uh, don't make sense. And now, if this is the wrong board because it was redone, I'm gonna have to go back and 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 get the right board. Okay. Why do the Germans haven't amassed more than seventy-seven CP? <laughs> and by the way. I, I still haven't clipped my counters for for um, for for king and country, and I was able to count that regardless of the amount of troops here, you should have when you if you are the owner of for king and country, you should have enough counters to uh, play this game on on board, unlike vassal which. I prefer to do in the interest of saving time. So you have a horrendous amount of, of, of troops. And keep in mind a little bit of background about Operation Windsor. It's about taking uh, the town of Karpiket and subsequently to, um, uh, to take, uh, they wanted to also to take the airport. Of course, airports are logistical centers uh, similar to what happened in Stalingrad, and I forget the uh, the um, the airport there that was due west of Stalingrad. Forgot the the name. I don't know, getting old. Um, the Russians on the encircled uh, Stalingrad. They went for the airport to cut off German supplies. Similarly, the Allies had a, an opportunity to capture an airport here. So. They did so, and it turned out um, um, it turned out that there was a tremendous amount of loss of life on uh, the part of the Canadians. Uh, they advanced virtually in open ground, and um, it was um, a meat grinder. Uh, ultimately, uh, what the Germans did, did was they were uh, they were given a bloody nose, but ultimately they the the defeated because they had to retreat because they they knew what was coming was operation operation hold on guys charnwood here's operation charnwood which was uh, the advance on can carpet kit is down here okay and this is the airfield here's Khan, and this is what the allies were and the canadians were up against now uh a great resource uh, for this other than Wikipedia there are a lot of resources out there but OTT military history this fellow has an excellent he's a, a historian and he has an excellent channel here he is right here highly recommended uh, if you are interested in Canadian history World War II history does Vietnam how about that um, Absolutely, a highly recommended channel for uh, historical knowledge. Let's uh, minimize those windows. Let's get back to our scenario. Everybody see our scenario? Of course, everybody sees our scenario. So we have uh, the Royal Winnipeg Rifles enter along the west edge on board G4. So the Royal, uh, you know, Winnipeg Rifles are down here. Again, they're advancing from the southern flank into Carpiquet. And then you have a whole slew of forces from the Chaudinier Regiment enter along the Carpiquet board. Uh, as far as I think, I think this is the Carpiquet board, but it could be this. Okay, this is the Carpiquet board. Now, this is ultimately the folks that, I believe the folks that um, took Carpiquet. Okay, and then... Elements of the North Shore Queen's Own Rifles Canada enter along the west edge of Board 53. Awesome. 
And then you got uh, four uh, supporting elements of the 10th Armored Regiment, Fort Gary Horse, enter along anywhere along the West Edge. So there's a, quite a few vehicles here, and I kind of spread them out according to where they would be needed the most. Um, then I have reinforcements as the British player. Uh, the Royal Winnipeg Rifles enter after turn two anywhere along the West Edge of board G4 and or Carpiquet board uh, on south of hex A6. Ah, it gets a little bit too much. But anywho. Yeah. Now look at what they have to uh, come up against. You got one, two, three, no, two eighty eights. 220Ls, 281mm motor, 175AT gun, not that bad, a 75L uh, uh, embedded turret, uh, a Panzer IV, and a Panther. I have a boatload of, 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 of um, uh, fortifications. And now, what I ultimately did here is, um, these are Panzer Grenadiers and elements of 12th SS. I assigned, like, a platoon for each leader, more or less. And this is my heavy weapons platoon. And what I think I'm going to do is take one of these perimeters and uh, perimeter markers and highlight two or three of them for each group. And um, and do random selection to see where they pop up. I would pick three good areas uh, where they can pop up and assign them a letter coordinate and, and whatnot. Uh, there's a, a, a boatload of offboard artillery. Um, offboard artillery and onboard artillery. See, I, I got to refer to the scenario card. That's part of the SSRs. Um, it's, a, it's a monster. Uh, now, the other thing that I, I really would suggest is that look at the setup here. Elements of the 1st Battalion Panzer Grenadier Regiment 26, 12th SS Panzer Division, Hitler Youth, ELR of 3, set up anywhere on East Row G aboard 53. You got to take note, I'm putting here simplify, uh, German setup, I'll tell you why. So, board 53, uh, on East Rojing, board 53, and or CA board, I'm guessing, again, that's Rho G. It's the Rho G. And or board G4, uh, it's the Rho AA. That's too far back. Now, you got three setup areas, and they're, like, off-center from one another. I would say, and having played, you know, the Carpiquet board here, where the Germans set up on board... Oops, East of board G, that's too far forward. That's really too far forward. I would, I would dare venture, uh, go along the uh, the road designated here, 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 there, 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 and there, and we got a good game going. Um, so let's zoom in and get those coordinates for the road. So we got 53, Q1, Y1, I1 to L6, I8, HI, I, uh, and then 53, no, uh, that's a uh, carpet. Um, 
I won. I see a I won. E4. E7. Q10. And then board four Q one V four Q ten. Is that simplified? You find the road, this is where the Jordan go, and then the rest is butter. Now oh. We've gone 16 minutes into the video. I'm going to have to do a part two. I really will have to do a part two. And I would probably DM these mortars. Dismantle them before going in. Yeah, I would have to do a part two because, well, here, the setup for the German setup is a little bit convoluted. But i um, got a couple of points. Now what remains to be done is decide where to best designate those groups of pl platoons, those Germans units. Then I have a something to think about about the trenches. And give it a go. Yeah, playing testing this one by myself. And like look at the other thing that you got. It's twenty uh, dummy counters. What happens? Anyways, guys, that's what I'm up against. And um, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, more content to come. Take care for now.